the, uh, the House Judiciary Committee just voted House Resolution 143, prime sponsor, Representative Verb, uh, with a few uh, amendments. Uh, the vote was uh, 19 to 8, and uh, Representative Verb, uh, his prime sponsor, is going to explain uh, the amendment uh, somewhat, uh, make some statements, uh, but we're certainly pleased that we're able to move this uh, resolution forward to the full House of Representatives for consideration. It's uh, something that was, uh, we've been discussing since uh, March. The resolution was adopted, in, or it was uh, introduced in March, and that uh, we feel that the committee, uh, in fact, uh, it was, I want to thank the, all the members that supported this uh, uh, resolution uh, for uh, their support. Uh, uh, we feel that the government's refusal to carry out uh, the, these sentences shows a lack of, re lack of respect for our justice system. And Representative Verb will explain uh, the amendment. Uh, we think that the families, the victims, we owe it to the victims and the families to see that justice is carried out. Yeah. Representative Verb. Thank you, Chairman. I'm pleased uh, today that the House Judiciary Committee voted 19-8 to send this resolution to the full House for a vote. This issue, the death penalty, is bigger than one person. It's not about myself. It's not about the governor. We're a single criminal or a victim. This is about whether or not the laws of Pennsylvania will be carried out. The people of Pennsylvania, through the representative government, they uh, have approved the use of the death penalty in the Commonwealth. Hubert Michael and Terrence Williams should be in another place right now under Pennsylvania law. I've met with the governor a few times since I introduced this resolution. He's been very respectful. I've certainly been respectful back. We disagree. We agree on one thing. These people should be in a very dark place. The difference is, under current statute, my view is they should be in a dark place six foot lower than what the governor feels. Both of these cases have gone through the full appeal process and then some. As we discussed in the previous press conference, 57 people in this Commonwealth must unanimously agree from the original jury of conviction to the original jury of handing down a sentence all the way up to the U.S. Supreme Court, must unanimously approve and agree to each case before it reaches the governor's desk. We know reprieves can be used, and in fact, Mr. Michael knows the word reprieve well when Governor Corbett had to issue a reprieve because our direct Department of Corrections were not medically prepared to carry out the execution back then. We are now. We should, should have executed Mr. Michael on Friday, and we did not. So while there is a joint commission, while the governor is waiting for that joint commission to issue its report, and wants to act on their recommendations, there's not one person from this side of the building on that commission. They're a year and a half late, can be well over two years late, and we know how Harrisburg works with their priorities and times to get legislation run to make through any changes, even if people agreed to them. That's delaying justice for the victims. While we're in that meeting, when I drafted this resolution, and when we're standing here now, Someone in this commonwealth, someone in this, in this country is being murdered. And the reality of it is many more will die. And by delaying any justice, by delaying any sentence, that justice being delayed is justice denied to our victims. So I thank you all for being here today. I thank the chairman for bringing this up today. And uh, I want to introduce the DA of your county, Tom Carney, to say a few words. Thank you. Unlike the gentlemen and ladies behind me, uh, I'm a member of the executive branch. And what that means is that when you take an oath of office, that oath is to enforce the law. And just as I am a member of the executive branch, so too is our governor. Uh, we have a separation of powers, and my job is to enforce the laws that these ladies and gentlemen pass, whether I agree with them or I don't. Okay, that is the way we work in this Commonwealth, and I think the governor has made an error 
in, um, in, in issuing this uh, reprieve, um, and he has an obligation to enforce the law until such time as the third branch of government, the judiciary, rules it unconstitutional. So I hope he will reconsider. Uh, I had, uh, as many of you may be aware, I, I uh, wrote a letter to the governor uh, requesting this. I did receive a, a reply from him. Uh, even the governor acknowledges the guilt of this individual. Uh, and to my knowledge, there are no procedural errors here that have even uh, been raised uh, that could be raised at this point. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, we need to enforce the law here. 22 years is long enough. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. District Attorney. Uh, Representative Stevens, I think one of them make uh, remarks. Yes, thank you, and um, thank you to Representative Verb for, uh, for pushing this initiative along. Justice delayed is truly justice denied. And Governor Wolf, every single day, is denying justice for our victims across this Commonwealth. You know, after a House Judiciary hearing a few months back where we heard from the Eng family, uh, I had an opportunity to uh, through D.A. Kearney, actually, to uh, learn more about the Hubert Michael case and really dig into the facts of that, that case. And that's why it's, it's critical, and, and some of the speakers here have made mention of it. You know, the facts of that case, to me, are as compelling a reason uh, to impose the death penalty as there have ever been. The fact is the governor doesn't point to any specific problems in either one of these two cases, the Terrence Williams case or the Hubert Michael case. And that's critical. You know, in, uh, in the letter back to D.A. Kearney, he says, unfortunately, Pennsylvania's capital sentencing system is riddled with flaws, making it error-prone, expensive, and anything but infallible. But he doesn't point to anything in either one of these two cases that stands as a reason to deny justice to the victims in this case and the victims' families, who every day have to live with the fact that their loved one's killer is still alive, despite the fact that the law calls for an execution to have been imposed. So for those reasons, uh, I join with my colleagues in urging the governor to reverse himself on these reprieves and instead come to the table with some constructive ideas, offer legislation, offer some type of constructive resolution to this issue, not just a blanket mor moratorium veiled in this um, in this uh, political agenda that he's bringing to the table and depriving justice for all these victims. So thank you very much, Representative Verb, for this uh, important initiative. Representative Saccone from Allegheny County. Thank you. I want to echo what my colleagues have said. And the only thing I want to add to that is that, you know, we seem to have an epidemic in this country at the federal level and now at the, at the state level of subverting the law. The executive doesn't get the, uh, discretion to decide which laws they're going to uh, enforce and which ones they're, they're not. We pass the laws and our executive branch is, is, has to enforce them. If he disagrees with the law, he can study it all he wants. He can take months, even years to study it. But in the meantime, he has to enforce it. And when you subvert the rule of law in this country, the people get confused. It undermines the entire system. And so we have to restore that, and that's all we're trying to do is let this governor know that we think he is subverting the law and the rule of law in, in our state by not allowing uh, justice in these two cases. And I think it goes a long way in letting the people of Pennsylvania know where we stand because we haven't been really heard from yet. So I hope the governor will get the message and we will restore the rule of law. Uh, and then uh, he, can, he can study it all he wants uh, in the future. Thank you. Representative Krieger, Westmoreland County. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Representative Berg. I will be brief. I think there are two issues I'd like to highlight very quickly. One, the people of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania support the death penalty. Through their elected representatives, we have passed legislation that establishes a death penalty. That is the law of the state. The governor acknowledges that. He just has decided he will not enforce that law as is his obligation. And, and the second, I would just echo what Representative Cohn said. No one is above the law. If the governor does not like the death penalty, that is his perfect right. It is not his right, however, to ignore that law, which is what he is doing. So I, I would echo what has been said, and thank you again, Representative Verne. Any questions from the media? Seeing none, thank you very much thank for being you. here. Appreciate it. <clears throat>